ones we have had circled since we started in Cathedral City. Oklahoma and Mississippi State. May's first pitch misses for ball one. A look at one of the best leadoff hitters right now. Sierra Sacco has been on fire, getting on base about 60% of the time to begin the year. And now she's got a 2-0 count. Sierra's already had an incredible tournament. This is the debut here at Mary Nutter for OU. Mississippi State's already played a couple, including a game against UCF, who we already saw, a very, very good team. Sierra went four for four in that game, worked a walk against Notre Dame as well, both victories for the Bulldogs. Sierra consistently setting the table. And right now, she's very much in the driver's seat. That's something we saw from Mississippi State just the patience at the plate, being able to make these pitchers work, and they have a game plan going in, and they did such a good job of not falling into the pitcher's trap, but sticking with their own game plan. Five pitch walk, Sacco goes to first. And a player who's already six for six on the base pass coming into this tournament. Now looming as Nadia Barbary checks into the batter's box. Barbary watching strike one. Nadia has been doing some traveling. An East Coast girl grew up in Georgia, but furthest she's ever been from home was the last time we saw Mississippi State in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Now, a little further north, a little further west. That's the best part about softball. Small world, big world, all at the same time. Got her. Nearly an at bat full of balls straight into strikes. That was a great bounce back at bat from Nicole May, getting this one pitcher's pitch on that river, a little bit on the line, but whenever you have two strikes as a hitter, especially an 0 2 count, you have to be disciplined. Yes, but whenever it's that close, you also know that you have to battle and foul some of those off. One of the best power threats in the history of Bulldog softball. Trying to begin the day for State, Paige Cook. Very quickly, Kinsey Hansen will go out and talk to May. quick conversation from head coach Patty Gasso just talking to her defense again Mississippi State they like to action call they like to make these yeah. defenses work you might see something here or there but just a little heads up from coach Gasso just a reminder to her defense which we've seen this Oklahoma infield shift around a little bit especially in that second base position so whenever you have defenders rotating in and out it makes it difficult to feel that consistency all the time. So whenever you have a situation that might cause a little bit of chaos, you want to make sure you're over communicating. Especially with Sacco at first. She's been quiet so far. Actually not of respect for Hanson. Lifted into center, continues to carry, and it's over the head of Coleman. That ball kept going and going. The opening lead belongs to the Bulldogs. Sacco across, thanks to Cook. 
And that is exactly what we talked about. That pitch and off speed, not a bad pitch, but that was a hit and run. Mississippi State, it doesn't matter if it's a bunt. It doesn't matter if it's an action call. They like to be able to get the ball rolling, get some action going. That one was shot well over the head of Jada Coleman, which if you've seen Oklahoma, you know that's not an easy task. That was a great job by Cook, staying on that pitch, staying on that off speed, extending through it, getting that hit. How about the start to the year for Paige Cook? That's her fifth double. I think she might have made a mistake along the base paths, though. Maybe thinking missing first base. Got first. Got second. Not too sure why they're calling the out. I, I can see the confusion. Kind of share it with Mississippi State right now. These umpires are just trying to figure it out, make the right call. Ron, Megan, and Robbie will gather. And no change to the signals, so it looks like Cook will be out. Maybe stepped off the bag before it was a fully dead play. I know we saw a lot of that. Is. Shoot. Runner left early. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a runner leaving early on that steal. We mentioned it was a hit and run. So it was yep. a straight steal. Runner left early. So they're bringing Cook back to yep. the it's box. Going to read hit, yep. and it's a dead ball. Yeah. Yep. And that is huge for Oklahoma to get that out. Because Mississippi State, they got all that momentum. They were up one to nothing. And then to get that runner off the base and to get that hit back is huge. And so all of a sudden, the first lead to all the momentum belongs to Oklahoma, a team that doesn't often need a whole lot of help in a game. That was a great eye by Patty Gasso. She's the one who pointed it out. And you don't win back to back to back by accident. Cook had to go up top to get that. It's by Hodge. So Cook finds a way on regardless, and the inning continues. And Cook, I mean, it's it's not an accident. She got that great hit, and it wasn't by accident. She has great hands, but more importantly, whenever she swings, she has power. This one, she's not in her legs. She doesn't maybe necessarily make the best pitch choice, but the way she commits to her swing, the way she's able to generate force, generate bat whip, that's what causes that bobble over at second by Hodge. And all of a sudden, May's got momentum. Jesse Blaine down 0 1. is crushed into left hit it high let it fly it's a plane bomb and that helmet raised high in celebration Blaine a big smile on her face as soon as that ball was hit everybody in the crowd knew it was off Something about nighttime makes that ball look like it just flies. But man, this one was crushed well over. I think this is actually in the pitcher's warm up area out there in left field. Yep. A no doubter for sure. And Mississippi State, one run taken away. They say that's all right. 
We'll come back and we'll get two. Absolutely. All right, bet from the Bulldogs. She crushed that thing to the Ivy here at Wrigley Field. Third home run of the year for Blaine. There's a little bit of tension whenever the batter's in the box, just calling time with her backhand to the home plate umpire. I don't think that signal was recognized by the umpire, so coach is a little fired up about it. And he'll get a warning. Bulldogs obviously feeling a little slighted after the leave early call on Sacco, who's as professional a base runner as you'll find. And now Coach Ricketts can get involved in the conversation as well. Mississippi State and Oklahoma, they have seen each other every single year since 2021. They're familiar with one another. They're not afraid of one another. No. This is a matchup that has made both teams better. And I think if you're Mississippi State, how hard you worked in the offseason, if you want to make a splash, if you want to go up in those rankings, this is the game to do it. It's against Oklahoma. And if you're Oklahoma, you're yeah. used to this by now. You're used to every time you face a team, you're going to get their best. You're going to get the high energy. You're going to get these teams giving it their all. So you have to come at it again with your all every single time. Beautiful pitch from May. There is certainly immense pressure on Oklahoma. And it's not because we're deciding anything here at the end of February, but... The streak sits at 62 in a row for the Sooners. They have no interest in losing it anytime soon. Hawkins down on the dropper. Nicole May bounces Sooners. It is loaded up, but they face one of the strongest pitchers anywhere right now. Aspen Wesley has been on fire for Mississippi State. As she misses there for ball one, she's the pitcher of the week coming in, and not just in the SEC, but nationally. She's got about a 90% strand rate. She has buckled down and dominated these last few starts, all of which have come against ranked opponents, and all of which have been dubs for Aspen Wesson. Coleman gets the big hop. Edwards can't quite play it. Jada Coleman has that effect. A leadoff base runner for OU. This is the second ball that we've seen that's been hit so hard. It just kind of ricochets off of the infielder. This one, it, it's, it's not an overly difficult one, but whenever you add in an extra 10 miles an hour, it makes it harder. We saw it with Cook off the glove of Avery Hodge, and then just now Coleman hit it hard off the glove of Edwards, who has been so solid at shortstop for Mississippi State. She's made some incredible plays. That just tells you both of these teams the kind of power that they have with their bats. Speaking of power, Terry Jennings, I mean, one of the yeah. best hitters in the nation. Pretty much her whole career at Oklahoma. Correct. She has been excellent and so, so consistent. That's what makes her such a tough out. She is very consistent at the plate. Doesn't get out too often. Her next RBI will tie her with Lauren Chamberlain for number two all time in Oklahoma history. It is a testament to how good number one was. She's still 70 ahead 
And of course, that's Jocelyn Allo. Great hitters count now for Tiara. I had lunch with that number one hitter today, Jocelyn Allo, and <laughs> we were just talking about this matchup specifically and how excited we were to see this game. We think it's gonna be a great one. Both of these teams, obviously, different kinds of targets on their backs. But still, they are looking really, really good. So it's going to be a good game tonight. Wesley's going to try and deny Tiara history, at least for a little bit. Oklahoma's got plenty of games with us here on Wrigley Field the next couple of days. Beautiful change from Wesley. Pop throw doesn't turn two, but that's a nasty off speed for Aspen Wesley. Talk about nasty. This one just floats in. Jennings just stays on playing of the ball so well. And so for that ball to be able to drop just a little bit, that is such a good pitch by Wesley. And that tells you she's done her homework. She knows Jennings is a hitter that you have to start in that lineup. If you can get out, that means good business for you and your team. Ball one into Kinsey Hansen and thought about it and only fleeting thoughts for Jada Coleman. Not worth the risk, especially with the powerful Hansen at the plate. Johnny Bench Award winner. Goes after that one. And for Wesley to be able to face this Oklahoma lineup, to be able for Mississippi State to be in this environment. This is a postseason environment. This is what they want to be in. This is great practice for later on in the season. K9 fouls it off and sends it out of play. And we talked about it in our last game. For UCLA, they have had a World Series feel to pretty much their entire schedule. And that certainly carries over to this one here at Wrigley. This could easily be a postseason matchup. I mean, just the sheer amount of really fans that are there. That too. Hansen unloads Kinsey Hansen. One of the best to ever do it at Oklahoma adds another. They call her K-9 because she's a big dog, and that was a big hat. Kinsey Hansen sends it right in the same place that Blaine hit it just half an inning ago. And this score is all tied up 2-2 two two as Oklahoma responds. What a luxury to have a, a perfected catch. back catcher. and forth game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Back no and forth. Both of these teams, tons of power throughout their lineup. Not a lot of holes. And Wesley hadn't even faced the top hitter. Burrito sends it to right. That was, to this point, the top numbers on OU. Burrito. But that just finds the glove of Cook. What a luxury to have a catcher as good defensively as Kinsey Hansen is, who can also rake on the other side. Here's Sid Sanders. Aspen floated that in. that response from Wesley after that bomb that Kenzie Hansen hit 
immediately comes back, gets a quick out from Melissa Brito, who in her own right has been fantastic for Oklahoma. She's going right after Sid Sanders here in the box. She is not afraid, and I think that's something that if your team's around the country watching Mississippi State, you've got to be impressed by them. You have to. Absolutely have to be. Coach Ricketts has continually built this thing and built this thing. And off their first Super Regional and highest rank, this team is poised on the launching pad for sure. It's going to be an unbelievably competitive league. Nearly all of it is in the top 25 right now. But State certainly understands that challenge. That changeup from Aspen Wesley has been straight cash in this first inning. She's got her... You can't get much closer than that. <laughs> so Riley Hull will go back to work here for State. And Nicole May will hope for her first full clean inning of work. Even both pitchers had the exact same script. Give up home run, bounce back strong. Hole hits it well back up the middle. A leadoff base runner for the second straight inning. Mississippi State knows if you can get the leadoff runner on, good things tend to happen. This one on that inside half, she's just able to fist that, get it through the infield, have a little bit, have a little bit more power. That's one thing that we've seen, not just from these two teams here tonight, but all across the country so far, the power that we've seen in a lot of these bats. Good stop by Hanson. It's been impressive to watch. And if you want to come see it in person, the official ticket source is through the MaryNutterClassic.com website. Right now, you're watching with us here on Flow or on site in Cathedral City. You have been treated to a show. Maddie Kennedy chops it up, and it gets by Jennings. Don't see that a whole lot. Bulldogs in business. This Mississippi State team came to play. This one, choppy on this field. We already know we've seen some high bounces, but Jennings she waits back a little bit too long, tries to turn it into a backhand. Like to see her move through that one a little bit, but aggressive base running by Mississippi State. And they got a runner on the corners. He's in Kylie Edwards. Had that tough play in her own right a little bit ago. It's short. This field is hopping. The energy resonating here in Cathedral City. And the ball jumping in response. This one, that's a nice block by Kenzie Hansen. That gets by and... Mississippi State, they regained the lead just a little bit. You can see Rocha, she's really wanting to talk to her battery right now. Just top game plan. Looks like Mississippi State has been spot on so far. And sometimes whenever you're a pitching staff, you, you make an educated guess. It's the ability to pivot, change, and turn. And on the other hand, if you're Mississippi State, you, you know that Oklahoma, they're not going to have a plan A, but they're going to have a plan A through Z. You should have a plan A through Z to respond to those adjustments. So I think both of these teams, as this game goes on, you're going to see just an all-out battle. One team punches, another team punches. It's going to be back and forth. It's been fascinating. I love Kinsey Hansen just making Nicole May laugh right there, just easing the tension yep. a little bit because you can feel it. There's a lot of energy. Coach Gasso said her favorite part of last weekend was the pitching and defense, and that has been challenged here by State. Kylie Edwards goes after the riser.
Edwards chops it up. Hull comes home and makes the play. Brito with an outstanding grab over at third. And the defensive wizard, no matter the spot, saves a run. And Oklahoma, they know Mississippi State. They're base running. They're going to be aggressive. This one, a ground ball to Brito. And you can see there's no hesitation because there's a lot of speed at third. No hesitation. Gets that out easily. Not even time to slide. It's up to Briley St. Clair who goes up top. The defensive versatility of Alyssa Brito, massive. Came to Norman saying, wherever you need me. So she winds up at the hot corner for the Sooners and just made a really nice play to take Hall off the table. Coach Ricketts has the lineup card out. Mississippi State knows they're in a pretty good position here. Less than two outs. They want some speed. Anytime that you can get a little bit more speed, a, a little bit more of an edge, you want to take it, especially against Oklahoma. They'll bring in the pinch runner. Kiara Sells has already had some massive runs for the Bulldogs this year. She checks in at the Keystone. St. Clair, 0 oh and 2 off the bunt bid. Nine holes for both of these teams, St. Clair and Riley Boone. They are the anchors to these lineups. They have been able to produce time and time again. Not there, not against May. St. Clair down swinging. Cole May going upstairs with this rise ball. Gotten a couple swings and misses. Flips to Sacco. And Sierra watches strike one. It was the call on her leaving early that seemingly doomed Mississippi State until a two-run shot from Jesse Blaine put those runs back on the board. Now Sacco's in a run-producing position with two on. Kinsey Hansen putting in work behind the plate over there. Saved a run, saved a run. Runner from advancing. Keeping that ball in front of her. You gotta know, gotta respect that arm. It's a nod of respect for the Johnny Bench Award winner that Sacco didn't just straight steal and prevent all that chaos from happening on the leave early. It was a hit and run that led to the miscommunication and ultimately the run taken off the board. Kinsey's got a cannon back there. That ball is flying on the screwball for May. This thing's in the dirt. <laughs> against a really, really disciplined hitter. Tells all you need to know. This time, Sierra resists temptation, and Kinsey keeps everything status quo. I think that's smart base running right there. As much speed as you have, an arm like Kinsey Hansen, the last thing you want to do as a runner is get thrown out at third. Being smart, trusting that your offense is going to come through in this situation. Sacco fouls it off. We'll see another. The Legion of Boomer very much in attendance here. The fans from Starkville making the trip as well. This is in the prime time slot for a reason. We got another good one coming up after this. Payoff hey, pitch one more time. How about an eight pitch battle? If there's one thing Mississippi State has done well, 
on these first two innings, it's see a lot of pitches. Yeah. They've been able to take Nicole May. If they're not hitting the first or second ball, they're going deep into the count. They're seeing a lot of pitches. They're communicating with each other in the dugout. Jacko chops it up and forces Jennings to dive. Here's the wide turn from Sells. The Bulldogs reclaim the lead. And the payoff of not going on those pitches that were in the dirt, being a smart runner at second, that is what you were waiting for. This one, deep in that 5-6 hole, you can see Jennings trying to get to it, not able to. And it, the speed, and that's where bringing in the pinch runner that pays off. And the Bulldogs, they're fired up in that dugout. Sierra's been so good here at Mary Nutter. We mentioned the four for four game against UCF, one of the best games of her career. Now she'll tack an RBI onto it as well and spark the two out rally in full. Nadia Barbary, even at once. We've seen Jennings, two of those balls, one squarely hit very hard, but two of those balls, she's gotten eat up on that backhand side. If you're Mississippi State, pay attention. Try to keep going there in that 5-6. It's a dangerous ask because you're talking about two of the best defenders on the left side of the infield in Brito and Jennings anywhere in the sport. But you're right. That has been the plan of attack, and it's worked really well. Kind of goes against your normal thinking, but hey, whatever it takes. Right up a shoot, now to play. Up. is a big deal right now but come on that is premium it's like jackpot tickets right there tell you what you got to win the crane game a bunch to pull that off you got to time up the lights is that ball every game at boomers i don't know <laughs> i was a ski ball gal myself I, I don't know that's where i got all my that's another one hey ski, ski ball is the secret to getting a bunch of tickets that is four three and well played for the freshman ella parker she might be able to get a softball to take home she'll make lasting memories here this one a first of many this ball up in the zone parker she's able to pull this doesn't get all of it doesn't get all the power a little early but the way she's able to stay through that ball and get extension the freshman gets a single and you'll see another outside. freshman yep. right here cassidy pickering and, and i give duo. you pause a little bit you see ella parker <laughs> you see cassidy pickering you see avery hodge back to back to back this time last year they weren't in the lineup. And right. now all of a sudden, they're all right next to each other. This is a new look for Oklahoma. But Patty Gasser, that shows that she has confidence in them and their ability to turn it over. The well, first two you mentioned were still in high school. Pickering unloads to right, where it sits for Cook. Cassidy Pickering has gotten off to an unbelievable start on this year but so has aspen wesley so she dodges the second of the two freshmen and now here comes the sensational sophomore hodge good strike to avery hodge Your point, mostly a pinch runner last year. Avery's been getting in the lineup, got a walk against Central Arkansas. Right now, sole objective is move Ella Parker from first. High shot. Only play is at first, and there's nothing there either. Avery Hodge 
a base knock. The perks of using this hard ground, we've seen it happen once unintentionally. This time, Avery Hodge does such a good job. By the time that ball is caught, there's no play at second, there's no play at first, and she's fired up. That slap just bounced right in front of the plate and then just sails over the head of the pitcher. And with her speed, she got to first safely. And you have Riley Boone. We talked about both of these lineups. Really great nine holes. The ability to turn the lineup over, not be, okay, it's just a nine hole. But this is a batter that we have to watch out for on both sides. Riley Boone, definitely one of them where she's a triple threat. Hit, butt, swing. Boone rips it into right. She has been so good lately. Six RBI last weekend. She's got another as Parker comes across. Stride for stride all night. We're tied again. And this feels like a heavyweight matchup. This one elevated in on the hands of Boone. That is her wheelhouse. She turns on this one. Whenever you can get a ball down the right field line, it is good news for your base runners. And right now you have speed on second and third and Jada Coleman up. Jada Coleman watching ball one. Lineup flips. Coleman had a single first time around. Wesley going to option A. Take a little off. That is dirty right there. And Wesley, her ability to get pitchers' pitches early on in the count, get those swings and misses, that is why she is so effective, even against hitters like Oklahoma. Jada Coleman in range. Sacco lays out and makes the play. What a huge addition out of the portal for Sierra Sacco and Mississippi State. But Oklahoma just continuing to produce an unconventional sack fly, but it does the job. Yeah, you love that effort right there, the full out dive. You could see she was full extension, but Avery Hodge tagging up right away. A lot of speed there at third. In Oklahoma, they take the lead four to three. Coleman finding a way to still be productive. Here's Tiara Jennings. That was a great pitch by Wesley. That wasn't Jada Coleman squaring one up. That was Jada Coleman out in front, popping something up. Unreal. Read and react for Sierra Sacco. step out. Be sure to tell your friends and family they can watch all the action live from Mary Nutter on flowsoftball.com. Flow Softball will be live streaming all the games. We'll also have all the archives available to watch on demand. Check out flowsoftball.com. That's flosoftball.com. Right up shoot. And out of play in foul territory. Appreciate you hanging out with us here on Flow. Nasty from Wesley. She closes the frame. But it's go to Mary Nutter. And they would say, man, I remember when I was a little girl, I got to watch this game. I got to see my first college game. I had my team that I followed. And for them to be able to step onto the field and compete, it's full circle for them. Great job there. She saw one get over her head earlier in the game. Jada had about enough of that. Yeah, definitely starting a little bit deeper. You have to respect the bat of Cook. There's so much power in her swing. She showed it not once, but twice. Her first at bat, and again here, her second. To your point, Coach Gasso talked about this. She said the reason they keep coming to this tournament is because it's every California player's dream. 
They came here as kids. They interacted with the best at the time. Now they get the chance to play, probably in front of a ton of friends and family, and pass that next generation on in a full circle moment. There's so many reasons why this is a great tournament. That might be number one right there. I think the visibility that this tournament brings for the sport, for future players, absolutely. The ability to get postseason competition and as a fan be able to watch not just one game, but multiple games. If maybe you can't go to the World Series, <laughs> The World Series comes to you if you're at Mary Nutter. It does. And then third, and I don't know, this might be number one. I've mentioned it every game, so I feel like I have to keep going. But the kettle corn, that one for me, <laughs> a pretty big one. May, <laughs> oh, May, a pretty 30. big pitch there. That's a great response from May. Blaine, last time she came up to bat, she had a massive two-run homer. And May, that off speed, the way it just slightly dips off at the end, gets the miss. First pitch to Hawkins for a foul ball. Our broadcast partner, Sid Supley, made a great point to me, Nicole. She said, if you don't have an endorsement deal from Kettle Corn by the end of this tournament, something is seriously wrong. Slide into my DMs. I'm right here. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Messages are open, y'all. It's popping. <laughs> I have no shame when it comes to kettle corn. Hey, listen, there's no reason to. Ain't no shame in the game. Hawkins right now just trying to extend this inning here for Mississippi State. Nicole May has settled in. And just like that, Salen will do exactly that. Two out base knock here for Salen Hawkins. This one, it's a changeup on that inner half, but it's just high enough that Hawkins, she's able to get on top of it, get into that 5-6 hole. I think May might have want that one a little bit lower next time. Riley Hull nearly came around to score first time up. Great play by Brito. Brought that run to its end, just a few feet short of a run. One thing I love about both of these pitching staffs is their ability to think on the fly, make adjustments. Yeah. It's not the coach calls the pitch and then that's it. It is a conversation. And just a moment ago in the dugout, we saw Blaine talking to her coach and she had her gear on, and I'm, I'm sure some of it was hitting, but I'm sure some of it is we know who's coming up in the lineup, and it's all about that adjustment. As Nicole makes another swing and miss, that rise ball has been really effective for her on those whiffs tonight. This we one just keeps bonafide. climbing out of the zone. Across the diamond, Brito up to the task again. So Hawkins gets a hit, but that's all. Oklahoma West, the original Batman, so much for the absolute superstars we've got on all ends, including Cook, who ranges in. One pitch, one out to Kinsey Hansen. up Alyssa Brito. Oklahoma looking for their third straight scoring inning. Oh, that one got Brito super crossed. You can see, or not even see, you can hear Coach really fired up talking to Blaine <laughs> saying, check that play. She swung. Yes, she did. And she did. They get the strike call. You were just talking about that conversation between pitcher and coach, and we're pretty blessed to have, I think, two of the best pitching coaches anywhere in America. Obviously, Coach Jen Rocha has more rings than one hand can hold, but on the other end of it, Tara Moat McKinley, the new 
first year head coach for Mississippi State has been outstanding and her impact has really been felt. All you have to do is look at Wesley's numbers and they pretty much speak for themselves. But what Josie Marin's been able to do under this new staff, what Delaney Everett has done in limited innings, it's been really, really impressive what the Bulldogs have done in the circle so far. That off-speed fooling burrito was so nice. Wesley having the ability to control it, keep it straight, or even drop it off the table. Skips in the dirt. You talk to Coach Ricketts about Coach T, the pitching coach, and she said the biggest thing she does is has an individualized plan for each pitcher. That's so important when you're building a complementary staff. It's not one size fits all anymore. You have to be able to have that individualized approach. Payoff pitch on that. Brito was having a tough at bat and she turns it into a whole lot of success anyway. One out double for AB 33. Whenever I think of a hot bat, I think of Alyssa Brito. This one out in front, but look at the way she extends through, not just with the front hand, but with the backhand all the way, keeping this one fair right down the line. St. Clair struggling with that one a little bit. And Brito able to get to second and get her team fired up. It's a Bulldogs team that has some of the best pitching numbers in the country. Top five in ERA, top two in whip. And it's an OU lineup that can mess those numbers up pretty quick. Sid Sanders watches strike one. I feel like we talked about the perks of being able to hit the ball hard. Whenever you hit the ball hard, whenever you swing hard, your chance of success goes up just because as a defender, it's a little bit harder to play. It makes it harder to get there in time. Getting sped up in every sense. A good thing when you do it to your opponents. Wesley, though, has had bounce back stuff throughout the course of this game. And right now, she's got that two strike count to sit. The cards go flying. That's how you know there's velocity in every direction. Aspen Wesley picks up the K. I mean, talk about a dirty pitch. You swing so hard, the cards are just fluttering in the wind. This one, hard in on the hands of Sanders. Diving stop, not going to be enough. Brito comes home. The Sooners double their lead thanks to the freshman, Ella Parker. That's going to be a name that you're going to be hearing a lot of, not just for Oklahoma, but around the country in freshman of the year conversation. She has a bat that is just unreal. Wesley leaves that one just a little bit over the plate. That's able to score Brito easily. Right back at it. The turn and fire off the bag. It's two out, so the out at second would have been fine, but Edwards didn't catch the keystone. So Cassidy Pickering reaches, and both freshmen stand on base for Oklahoma. This one, I almost thought that there was going to be a step on second from Edwards. She goes to first, and that throw just a little bit off. A lone loss on the ledger to UC Davis in their finale in Puerto Vallarta. But this is the toughest test yet for these surging state Bulldogs. Avery Hodge trying to keep the two-out rally going. She activates the feet and nothing more. Bottom part of the order already has five hits on the day. Yes, 
just a bit low. You know Coach Ricketts wants Aspen to get this out here, close the frame. Then maybe you consider your pen as the next OU group would mark the third time through, but Wesley's been so good on the course of the year. Maybe you do leave her in. Time in that dugout. Pitch on the inside half, but I think you give Wesley a couple more batters, especially with that top half of the lineup. She has had success maybe by the time True. it comes around to Burrito. Well, Wesley, do it herself. A great grab. She sends it over to Hull to clean it up. Still, Oklahoma producing. The idea of being a competitor and wanting to win and installing that into your athletes and getting the most out of them, that <laughs> they could not be more similar in that aspect. Coach Gasso talks about it. She says it always makes her smile when one of her former players turned coaches uses some of the phrases that she instilled in them when they were in Norman. You hear it a lot. Maddie Kennedy right up a shoot. I'm sure even you, over the course of analyzing these games with us here, have fallen into a few gasoisms. <laughs> it's just so embedded in our sport. I was about to say, I, I drop a few more gasoisms than people realize, I think, but <laughs> yeah, it becomes so embedded into who you are, that yeah. standard, that mindset, that way you think. Kennedy gives it a ride to right, and Wrigley is just big enough. Pickering at the fence for the first out. That one knocked far. Elevated, not quite that sharp jump, and Kennedy's able to take that one for a ride, but it was a good read by Pickering. Kylie Edwards. Watching ball one. funny to your point of knowing the gasoisms she dropped a quote that i think you and both coach ricketts really understand more than the rest of us that one's chopped up goes straight to may she wasn't so happy after that last weekend and she said our team got the old me at practice it came out a little bit <laughs> oh man I remember being a freshman at Oklahoma and Lauren Chamberlain, Shelby Penley saying, man, you guys have it easy. <laughs> what do you mean? This lady's tough. And I go back and I, I watch her games and I'm like, man, you guys have it easy. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> I, I am now. <laughs> I'm now one of those. Riley St. Clair hit it perfect. Carries it over the head of Boone. And just like that, a two out double for Riley St. Clair. A real triple threat. These nine holes, they've been making an impact today. This one elevated deep. You could see how shallow both Riley Boone and Jada Coleman were. And, and that just allows her to easily get into second. She's just cruising in there. But St. Clair, she's really made an impact for her team quickly. Her first double of the year. And Mississippi State's pageant queen. Works her way over to second base. And now looks to make a dramatic exit on a score. And Sierra Sacco bringing another. Sacco on that off speed. We've seen her do good things with that pitch. I mentioned at the beginning of the game, whatever that pitch is on for Nicole May, you tend to see her do some really good things on the mound. 
Sacco fouls it back. Reminder, you can keep up with USA Softball all year long at www.usasoftball.com. Local events, USA Softball National Championships, and the latest on certified equipment, just a click away. If you're a top 12 U player, sign up. And try out for the USA All-American Games. Plenty of All-Americans right here. Mays 1-2, outside. Off speed on it was Sierra Sacco, but pulled it a little early swing. Love that adjustment from Sacco. That last time she saw that pitch, kind of froze. You saw her knees buckle, but on this one, she's ready for it. Turns on it just a little bit too much. That ball was hit hard. This is the third time around. Can State start to see May a bit? That one was easy. Riley St. Clair can fly from second. Sacco's going to have another battle. She had an eight pitch single in the second. Here's the eighth pitch of this at bat. Sierra not making any friends. Except for those in her own dugout. May comes home. Goes with the off speed. Did she go? No. Powerful wrists for Sierra Sacco. And the Bulldogs are still alive in the fourth. That was a close pitch there for Sacco. Way to hold off on that one. Definitely borderline, but just above those that strike zone. I think she held. I do too. Give Nadia Barbary a chance. She has hit in both of her games here at Mary Nutter, both against UCF and Notre Dame. She picked up two against the Knights. A good team, as we saw yesterday here on Wrigley Field, and a quality win for the Bulldogs. Both of them have been. Watching 0 oh and 2. Dogs 1 for 4 with runners in scoring position. Oklahoma on the other end of it, 3 for 6. That about sums up our difference right now. Not much else separating these two. May will need at least one more. I love this microphone that <laughs> Kenzie Hansen, she is loud, she is vocal. I love that in a catcher. She demands respect, leads by example, but I love what you get to hear her saying. You love to hear that conversation between her and her pitcher. Scrape that one off the dirt. Gave it a good ride considering, but it sits in the waiting glove of Riley Boone. A hit, of course, here as well. First pitch of the day from Matalasi Faapito, the new pitcher here for Mississippi State. She has been awesome. One and one, 11 and two thirds. ERA is under one, 16 Ks, one walk.
Boone always creates a tough play, but Hawkins. We mentioned, of course, Pretty deeply personal one for OU right now. Hey, look at Fabito. <laughs> Put a one in the score sheet. going. Holman scores from first and the Sooners make it a fourth straight scoring inning.
make it so unbelievably difficult for teams to scout Oklahoma. And SJ provides that final piece. So in addition to the tactical element of it, I think Coach Gasso just really wanted to give SJ a chance. There's a huge smile on her face when she was talking about a redshirt freshman pitcher. To be clear, this is not a walk-on who gritted her way onto the team. SJ was a top 20 player in the class of 2022. So she's earned every bit of this, but she does also have a tremendous pedigree. I think doing what she has been is Whenever she gets into the game, making the most of the opportunities, and you do that, you're going to get more and more and more. And then also, it's great because you see SJ and you see a pitcher who isn't going to blow it by you, but she's going to have that spin. She's going to have that craft. She's not trying to be those other pitchers. She's being the pitcher that she knows how to be. Jennings, the short throw, the long hodge. Good speed by Jesse Blaine prevents the twin bill. This one, SJ, she went away, away, away. And then that last pitch to Blaine, not going to overpower her, but that's in on the hands. It speeds her up just enough to get that ground ball. Almost that double play from Oklahoma. So Salen Hawkins with one on, one out here in the top of the fifth. And she watches ball one. Hawkins off a career day against the Fighting Irish. Two for three, two RBI, and a run scored against Notre Dame. She's one for two in this contest, looking to keep the momentum going here at Mary Nutter. To Pickering, the pop, for out number two. SJ is that type of pitcher as a hitter. You get a little frustrated because you're just waiting, waiting. You're a little bit out in front. You're a little bit out in front. And then she just blows something by you on the inside half. Adds a little bit more zip. Certainly a monster pivot after seeing May three times. That poses a real challenge, but that's exactly how this staff is built. It's a changeup, not the pitch, but the person in the circle. Little velo there, bottom part catches. Riley Hall will wait her turn. One of the most patient hitters in the SEC, a top five walk rate in the Southeastern Conference a year ago state leader in that regard. She sits and waits, but it's two strikes. Talk about floating in this one. Top of the strike zone with this off speed. Hall goes after that one. Hodge goes back and makes the play. 
Mississippi State had a few runs early. But this Oklahoma pitching and so consistent about getting runs across the board. That is something. Whenever you think about a big picture, it's like, yes, of course. But what Oklahoma does so well is they don't think about things big picture. They see things as they are one pitch at a time, one inning at a time. And for them, it's all about winning each winning, each inning. 5-6 hole. Cassidy Pickering has her second hit. That is four total base knocks for the two freshmen hitting 6-7 for Oklahoma. Pickering taking this one where it's pitched, gets it deep into that 5-6. A downward angle on that barrel, but that's exactly what she needed. And big smiles from the freshman. 7-3 lead runner at first here for the Sooners is Cassidy Pickering. Avery Hodge will come up one for two on the day. A single and a ball hit straight to Aspen Wesley, who helped pitch in. The out. That one right up. Yeah, pinch hit here. Will Alina indeed. Torres coming in for Avery Hodge. We've seen them kind of interchange yep. for Oklahoma, battling it out for that second base position. But Torres definitely having a little bit more power. That's what Gasso wants in this situation. Did pick up an RBI versus Lamar last week. All part of that second base rotation for Oklahoma. That is the battle of choice. A lot of these spots pretty solidified by longtime players, most of whom are in the top three at their position. But second base, that's a war right now for these Sooners. And while Everett missing up top, Delaney Everett hasn't worked very much this year. Through a couple innings against UAB, and that was about it. But she had a really good first fall, ERA under one. Gave up one hit in her 13 innings pitched. We talked earlier about how Coach T has made an immediate impact on this freshman. She gets a chance right now. And to come in as a reliever, that's a that's a whole different mindset as a pitcher. There's high intensity, high stakes, warm up. But to start an inning, to be back in that game. That's another different kind of mindset. And that rise ball is just so pretty. Getting that strikeout against Torres, being able to get ahead early in counts. Upper limit right now, two innings pitch. That was her high against UAB. far and away her toughest task yet. This is a welcome to college softball moment for the very talented Delaney Everett. We've talked about this all preseason, getting these challenges, getting these freshmen who are new to the college game, these reps, invaluable. Big hack from Riley Boone. One ball, two strikes, and a four-run ball game here in the bottom of the fifth. Laney Everett got the strikeout of Torres. off right now against the freshman. 
And I'm loving this look on Everett's face. She is completely locked in. She's in battle mode right now. She didn't come to play or mess around. She's here to compete. Up top, the California native. Saw that yep. adjustment that Riley Boone made, bringing that visor, that build down on her helmet, getting a little bit low in her stance. She's fouled off a couple of those rise balls, trying to battle, but wanting to lay off those higher pitches. Boone pops it up. And, wait. Nearly had the room. Everett, the California native, but grew up about seven hours away. It's a big state. Still fully understands what this tournament means. Boone puts the eighth pitch in play to center. Sacco retreats and makes the play. Lineup flips for Jada Coleman. Nice job by Everett. Being able to continue to build up that ladder, working a little bit higher, a little bit higher. You can see the communication right there between Riley Boone and Jada Coleman. Probably going to get pitched similarly. Both have had, had success tonight. In with some count leverage. Jade has been a tough out. Three productive plate appearances. Single and run, walk and run. And even when she wasn't out, it brought in a run. Pop throw down to second. Ball dropped at the last second by Edwards. That was a snipe from Blaine, but Pickering, a stolen base, her third. And I think that was a hit and run. You could see Jada Coleman asking Coach to get that sign again and then running out of the time. That battery only have 10 seconds to get in the box and be ready. And that one didn't swing and Pickering left to dry just a little bit. Got lucky on that one. She's got good wheels, so that's the back end of that decision. She got a good jump, it was a great throw, but the physicality at the point saw the bob bobbled just a little bit. That was enough. Still, Everett's got a couple down. High chop right there for Jada Coleman. All smiles right there. I like, eh, probably shouldn't have swung at that one, but hey, still hitting. <laughs> hey, been there, done that. <laughs> Sometimes, especially whenever you're facing a pitcher like Everett, that high school just looks so good. Yep. My money, it's the nastiest pitch in the sport. It's the one that makes softball unique. You can't throw a rise ball in baseball, but in softball you can. And when it's right, it is disgusting. And Everett's got it right right now. Just a piece, tough play. Edwards has no play. Oklahoma's speed, the difference maker, and it's suitors at the corners. So ones with Avery Hodge and Jada Coleman. This one it bounces close to the plate, and that is where this field is most bouncy. On that chop, it just has such a high bounce. Cassidy Pickering able to get to third, and by the time that that ball is caught by Edwards, 
there is no play at first. Jada Coleman too fast. Talk about a battle. Fouling those off, fouling those off. Getting that lower pitch. Making the most of use of her wheels. That one squirts away. Round comes Pickering. OU adds another. Everett, as soon as this ball was out of her hand, she pretty much knew that was a ball that was supposed to be low and out on the zone. Just got away from her, her arm, got away from her body. And Oklahoma taking advantage of the error at second, that tag out, being able to be safe, being able to advance on that just choppy ground ball and then taking advantage of the pass ball. Yara Jennings still with a runner in scoring position. Oklahoma five for ten. Hard hit that's off the foot of Everett. She's fortunately all right. Round comes Coleman. It's a nine spot on the board for Oklahoma, their second run. Now all the attention will be on the freshman. That was a laser right at her. Absolutely shot back. Gets that landing foot, that front plant foot, just right on the toe. Coleman, she's able to round and come home easily. That one ricocheted off of. Outstanding. And right now, she will just try and stem the tide, especially because Kinsey Hansen at the plate represents the game winning run for the Sooners. We all know what she's capable of. Back in the first, that two-run homer to tie it back up against a monster first inning by Mississippi State. Flared up and straight into the waiting glove of Hawkins. So, Marin comes in and does the job. Mississippi State. Start out with strike one, Madison Kennedy. Two very different pitches, same result. First full inning of work here for SJ. Came in after the walk. Did record all three outs. Chopped up foul. Been a fun couple hours here. Started out truly back and forth. Two runs each in the first inning for both Mississippi State and Oklahoma. State comes out with another one in the second. OU doubles that with two. Then one, two, two for Oklahoma. They have not stopped scoring. Zero empty frames, and SJ Guerin adds another strikeout. And a big strikeout from SJ Guerin. This ball tailing on the outer half of the plate. See Kennedy just reaching for that one. 
And that's what the spin of SJ Garen does. It, it's tricky, it's finicky, it's frustrating. Yeah. And if you've ever played softball or baseball or even wiffle ball, you know what I'm talking about whenever you're waiting for that ball to come and you start to feel like that front foot just keeps tapping, keeps tapping, keeps tapping, trying to get that rhythm down, get that timing down. Really spinny pitchers, that's kind of the impact that they have on hitters. We were talking yesterday about a coach calling one of her pitchers our annoyer and meaning <laughs> that in the best possible way. That's what yes. SJ does as well. I want a lot and of Oz there. Yeah. I feel Edwards just leaning over that plate a bit and trying to anticipate that really spinny pitch on the outer half. Then SJ comes in with that curveball. Edwards watching outside. Kylie Edwards, unbelievably powerful freshman, already in the top 10 in slugging percentage in the SEC. He's only had 11 college games. Home run on the very first pitch that she saw as a member of the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Right now she's got a 3-2 count. I loved her answer. She was asked, why did you want to go to state? She said, Southern hospitality is real. Loved how nice everybody was. And so it winds up in Starkville, Mississippi. Right now, she will hospitably be shown first base. A one-out walk for Kylie Edwards. For Mississippi State, the key to getting back into this game, to getting some runs across the board, talking to each other in the dugout talking to each other what do you see what is going on in those at bats what what pitch do you think we should hunt the more communication that they have at bat to at bat the bigger the chance of success you saw it early on in the game but especially whenever you have a new pitcher in you want to relay that information as quickly as possible this is a hallmark that Mississippi State has really grown this year. To be able to bring Aquana Brownlee off the bench as a pinch hitter, when she's hitting about 400, on basing about 500, and has nine RBI already, this team has options. And right now, she's got a 2-0 count. about another player that's been making the most of their opportunities. Brownlee, it's not easy to live the life of a pinch hitter. You don't know when your name's going to be called, but whenever it is, it's probably a big situation. And you're probably not going to have a ton of heads up. So knowing that, knowing your role is to be locked into the game at all times, to be asking those who are ready in the game, what do you see? What, what are you noticing? Bonna starts plenty as well. Short throw there. Jennings to Hodge for the out. Only play to be had. So Brownlee's still productive, but Edwards down. Brownlee just getting on top of this, what, just a little bit. Easy play to Jennings to get that lead out at second. And I think we'll see St. Clair enter back in. Now, Kwana's job was at the plate. Her team will pick her up. It is indeed Briley St. Clair re-entering and running at first base. Patty Gasso, come out and talk to her entire infield as well as SJ. A grad transfer. 
being able to bring in all her knowledge and obviously a great pitcher in her own right, but just learning and molding and just two really great softball minds coming together. She said it's been a lot of fun. Not about that. A lot of talent in that room. Numbers for Kelly thus far on the year, 3-0. She's thrown 14 innings pitched. ERA of 0.5. McNeese got her for one run. That's the extent of it. 13 Ks, two walks. Perfect on the day. Different look in the circle right now. Maxwell. Just misses. It's pretty remarkable. These are two players who nearly wound up in very different spots. Sierra Sacco was going to go junior college until Latex coach happened to see her and was like, whoa, that's a good player, and brings her up. And then she lights up Conference USA. And meanwhile, on the other end of it, after Kelly Maxwell's first year with Oklahoma State, Kenny Gajewski really had to challenge her, saying, hey, you're having a tough time. And can't really get a whole lot of outs, but she responded to that challenge and has become one of the best anywhere in America. Yeah, really known for that backdoor curve. You just saw on that last one, kind of handcuffed Sacco on that pitch. About three straight, eight plus pitch plate appearances for Sierra Sacco. Did in the second, did in the fourth, did it right now in the sixth. Slight work from her. <laughs> yeah. What you want out of your leadoff. She really is the prototype. Gets on base at an absurd clip, forces pitchers to work, and when she does get on base, she'll turn one base into two pretty regularly. and gets on base, being able to be moved over, but you have Cook not too far behind her, and she has been going off this year, so that's a great combination. Mm. Top shelf, cash. Kelly Maxwell comes in, gets the final out. Oklahoma wants a few more. Oklahoma hoping to slam this door and head into that one with a win. Plenty of prime seats all across Wrigley. First pitch a little outside from Marin. Marin, received by her battery mate and former travel ball teammate. Jesse Blaine playing with Josie Marin, and Josie was a huge part. When Jesse went into the transfer portal out of Auburn, Josie was calling her left and right. Come to Starkville, come to Starkville, come to Starkville. And well, here she is, a Mississippi <laughs> State Bulldog. Brief bobble, and sweet recovery. Barbary to Hull. Bonet is a proud Great partner release. with Mary Nutter. Mm -hmm. Look at this release from Barbary. This one seems like a can of corn. She bobbles it, but she's able to pick it up on that hop and that release. That's what gets that just in time for Brito. Nice play over there at third by Barbary. And that's big because Oklahoma, they've been able to get that leadoff batter on quite a bit. 
these last few innings that that leads to the success that leads to runners getting put on base. Coach Gasso's got the lineup card out. A reminder that Bonet is a proud partner with us here at Mary Nutter. Check out Bonet products and design a new setup. USA Preps is the largest college camp and tournament company in the country with close to 100,000 players, helped so far, and counting. If you have a player interested in playing college softball, like the players you're watching now, usapreps.com and register for an event. Oklahoma will go to the bench and bring in Riley Ludlam, who has already played a lot of meaningful, meaningful moments here for Oklahoma. And as we're talking about the transfer portal with Kelly Maxwell and with Jesse Blaine, here's another in Ludlam. A pair of catchers in that list. Ludlam watches ball one. She's had some moments. We talked about it with Brownlee. She comes in as a pinch hitter, being able to be so successful. Same thing with Ludlam. She's had a lot of success in some big, pivotal moments for Oklahoma. A couple of pinch hits where she's been the one to get that go-ahead or even the winning run from the plate. Coach Gasso had a lot of really good things to say about Riley Ludlam in her weekly press conference. Was super impressed with what she did against Central Arkansas and McNeese. She gets a chance right now. That's knocked down by Marin. Her effort rewarded. Pitchers fielding their position. Something we've seen so much of this year, Nicole. And Josie's another great example. And this one, lower in the zone, but Ludlam does such a good job. Just getting through that ball. Mayor just that glove, being able to tip it out of the way. Another pinch hitter with Quincy Lilio. And she watches ball one. Leo, another one competing for that second base spot. Right now, though, she'll focus on the efforts with the bat. With the four at-bats last weekend for Oklahoma. Gets her first here in the opening salvo for the Sooners here at Mary Nutter. Look at Josie Marin again. Had to come into this one in kind of an emergency situation after the ball hit Delaney Everett. And Josie's pretty familiar with that. She had a mid-season injury herself last year, rehabbed it through the summer and now back and firing for Mississippi State. So that's big time. Got a great change right there. It's a nice pitch on that inside half. We've been seeing a lot of off speeds from both teams tonight on that inner half of the plate. Typically you see pitchers want to go away with that off speed, but it's been pretty effective. Chopped up by Lilio. Goal number one for State right now is just get to the seventh. Extend this game as much as you can. Give yourself a chance. Even if you don't wind up winning it, you can build a lot of momentum. Bulldogs have Fullerton coming up and Fresno State. And a split doubleheader tomorrow. After that, they get back to Starkville, the Bulldog Invitational. Both these teams have a home series awaiting after the action here at Mary Nutter. We will talk about that home series for Oklahoma a little bit in our next game. Do a little tease ahead for the matchup with Wisconsin. It's a humongous home game for Oklahoma. Great job by Lilio. She works the walk. Corey, you're teasing them. You're teasing them, Corey. <laughs> Hey, we got to show them a lot of love. <laughs> if you know, you know. Reason to watch ahead. For now, it is Oklahoma. The possibility of ending this game. Cassidy Pickering represents the potential game-winning run. Let's see another pinch hitter here. Coach Gasso definitely wanting core. to get 
off the bench. And give them their reps, give them their opportunities. And Core goes after one that dives through the zone. Nice pitch by Marin. That one on the inner half and it's just dying down, gets under the barrel. Brewers had three total at bats so far as an Oklahoma Sooner. Really limited last year due to a back injury, but well, she's back now. A chance to make a difference in this one. Postseason, which is the focus for Mississippi State after getting left out last year. You are ready to go. Marin, she's really pounding that lower inner half to core, just going at her right there, right there, right there. The last three pitches in that same exact spot. It's a great setup. Squirts away. Extra 60 feet. Right now the focus is on core. The Leo's run matters, but core at the plate is much more significant. This one in that same location, just a little bit farther down. You could see Marin was hoping that core would chase after that one. Sink out of the hand, it started off too low. There's that height. Merritt gone to that same pitch. Four pitches in a row. Not afraid to work that spot. No. four has been chasing after it. That's the thing. If it ain't broke, right? 2-2. Two -two. There it is. Little rising action. Marin earns the K and forces this thing to go the distance. Mississippi State looks to build momentum. Uh, but the biggest thing that I like to see was UCLA and how they responded from their first two weeks to how they look today. It, it was night and day different. Yep. That's a great We've thing about postseason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter <laughs> how you start. It matters how you finish in June. And I think Mississippi State, they're coming out hungry. They're a really good team. If they can maintain that and be hungry and continue to push and continue to strive, we'll see them later on in postseason. But it is a long, long season. But they are looking pretty good here to start off their year. A lot of the players have talked about it, saying you never forget the feeling of not hearing your name called. You know, we always think of the celebratory video, everyone loses their mind when you see your school's name pop up on the screen, but the opposite is very much true as well. And so Mississippi State, I don't think they're hurting for bulletin board material. Even if they fall in this one, they are gonna have that hunger all year, I have no doubt. Then there's the obvious. Most people want Oklahoma to lose. They have won back to back to back. The amount of, can somebody else please just win already? But yeah. what they have done has been nothing short of <laughs> amazing. They, If they yep. pulled off, ultimately that's every team's goal is to get to the national championship, be that last team standing. Obviously, Oklahoma, very familiar with that feeling. But if they could get back to back to back to back, that'd be the first time ever. Quality plate appearance for Barbary. She works the walk. Only UCLA in 89. And these Sooners have even put together the three in a row. So Oklahoma 
certainly trying to make history. This would be their 63rd win in a row. And of course, the other element of it is the chase for eight, Nicole. The overall championships sit at seven. I think you know a thing or two about that. Paige Cook watching 0-1. Cook, she has been on fire tonight. A couple of hard hits, took a walk. There's been definitely an impact play for Mississippi State, not just tonight, but throughout this preseason run that they have been having. It's easy to see why. The way that she, the ball just flies off of her bat. funny how we talk about how modern college athletics has changed so much and divisions don't mean as much as they used to. Kelly Maxwell is a great example going from Oklahoma State to Oklahoma. Paige Cook's another great example. She grew up in Georgia. She loved UGA. She wanted to be a different type of bulldog. But over the course of the recruiting process, found out, hey, the right home for me is in Starkville, not Athens. that point I mean as a kid growing up you have this image in your head of wow this is where I want to go but there's a program out there for everyone I truly believe that whether it's a power five school whether it's small d1 whether it's d2 d3 juco there's so many options out there for those who want to play and then and it's not just about where you go but the right fit for you and obviously, Cook, she's in a right fit. She has settled it very, very nicely. That's why I think it was a great decision, and it impacted this sport more than any other when the NCAA said, you know, I think we've had enough of kids committing to colleges. Let's cut that one off a little bit before we start getting five-year-olds signing letters of intent. And so we've kind of curbed what was getting a bit ridiculous with the baby commits. So you have at least a little time to try and find truly the right fit. Back door getting away from Maxwell. Mississippi State runner in scoring position for the first time in a couple of innings. Really truly feeling like there's a threat, no outs. And one of the best hitters in their lineup up at the plate. She has been battling pitch after pitch. She draws a full count. just survives the piece. <laughs> I mean, look at that battle. That is an excellent pitcher's pitch by Maxwell. Back door right on that corner. And she's just barely getting that one. She is battling, waiting for that pitch to come inside so she can turn on it. And that's a quality eight pitch walk for Paige Cook. And the discipline, the battle from Mississippi State has paid off. That's two walks in a row there for them. And that's free bases. That's free base runners. You get a hit, and all of a sudden, runners who weren't supposed to be on the base, and now they're scoring. That is huge. Brings in Jesse Blaine. All of a sudden, trying to keep the good going here for Mississippi State. She goes after a riser for strike one. At a bare minimum, Bulldogs doing the rest of this field a favor. Those two walks are on a combined 15 pitches from Kelly Maxwell. And so the Bulldogs driving the pitch count up. They want to score runs, but at least creating some tax on his arms. Mm. And Blaine is eager for those pitches. She likes those. After two walks, so you, yes, you want to be attacking, but you also want to be smart and make Maxwell come to you. 
It was after one outside part. Kelly Maxwell bounces back for the first out in the seventh. Talk about the differences in those. You said 15 pitches. This one was a three pitch at bat. Three swings and misses in a row. That last one up on that outside corner. See Blaine, no legs, just kind of waving at that pitch. Great late movement by Maxwell. Hawkins watching strike one. Maxwell, in her entire Oklahoma career, just spanned about 10 games now, had only walked two. <laughs> we'll match that in just this game. Which meant you knew she'd probably come back a little angry. That one just kisses that outside corner. We talked about back in the third, a pitcher who's able to throw pitchers' pitches, it gives them the ability, early on in the count, it gives them the ability to start working that ladder, whether it's working the ladder out, working the ladder up. And that's what we've seen from Kelly Maxwell, that last pitch, just a little bit farther outside, but the hitter feeling like they need to protect. And get him going after balls that aren't even on the chalk line, or aren't even on the plate, but those are in the river closer to the chalk line. Hawkins battling at age of 47 down swinging. It's a great fight, but it's back to back K's for Kelly Maxwell. I love that sequence. Back door, back door, back door. This one up in the zone for the swing and miss. Maxwell definitely found a groove after walking the first two batters. She gets back to back K's. Lexi Sosa will come in. That's funny, right? As I'm railing against young commits the youngest verbal commit ever for the ucla <laughs> bruins will come in and make her appearance in this game she was hardly starting out middle school when she decided she wanted to take her talents to ucla Got over 20 offers when she was 13 years old. Took last year off to get right and now joins this Mississippi State program. Been really, really good the last couple of months in the circle. Right now, she'll grab it back. Nice job by Hansen going after, asking if that was a check swing, gets that call for her pitcher. And, and I do think it's such a great thing that that rule changed because as somebody who, myself, I got recruited early, a lot of yeah. people that I know got recruited early. It's the excitement. It's, a, ooh, I want to go here. This is flashy. Absolutely. But whenever you're in middle school getting recruited, I mean, I thought that I was going to be a fashion designer. <laughs> I right. never would have guessed go. that I'm doing what I'm doing now. And not to say that you can't change your mind once you're older. Sure. But you do get a better sense of things that you're interested in. You do get a better sense of things that are important to you, things that you want to see in a program, things that you want to see in a school. Yeah. Sosa watching strike three. Maxwell does her thing, and the streak lives on for the Oklahoma Sooners. 63 wins in a row. Double figures here in 2024, and the champs roll on as they prepare for the back end of their doubleheader against Wisconsin. Oklahoma was going stride for stride early, Nicole, but they did what they do late. 
Yeah, it was nice to see a whole staff used in this game. You had Nicole May, SJ Guerin, and Kelly Maxwell to wrap it all up.